Greetings, motherfuckers. My name is Sam, and today we are here for a chilly 101 with some quite big news. In case you missed our special upload earlier in the week, I've got some news. This is the last time I'll be bringing you one of these intros, or indeed any voiceover for the videos. I know, stock footage person, I know, but fear not, because 101 Facts shall continue valiantly with Chris on vocals. He's the head editor, we've had him before, Sunscreen beans good. and you guys are in for a treat with him. But I will sincerely miss giving you a treat, as in my treat. Uh, uh, I mean, like, my voice. Doing this, I'll miss you. But hey, look, it doesn't have to be goodbye. I'm on both Twitter and Instagram on this handle, Sam101Chap. So give me a follow there and check out the other video we uploaded for more info on what's coming in the future. But hey, let's not get too sad. We've got 101 facts to learn. So, when did Alaska become part of the United States and how much did they pay for it? Why does Alaska contain pretty much the perfect location to live within if a zombie apocalypse were to happen? And where do Alaskans get their incredible curtains from? Because I need that blackout power. Two out of three of those questions are going to be answered, so sit back, grab your warmest clothes you can find, and get ready because we're about to learn 101 facts about Alaska. Number one. Alaska is an American state in the extreme northwest of the North American continent. It actually borders the Canadian province of British Columbia, but it's part of the United States. Number two. It's actually the largest of all 50 states at 1.7 million kilometers squared, and holds that achievement by quite a margin. In fact, it's bigger than the total area of the next three biggest states, Texas, California, and Montana, added together. Number 3. Despite how big Alaska is, it has the third lowest population out of all the other states, making it the state with the sparsest population, with just 736,000 people living there as of 2020. Number 4. The capital of Alaska is Juneau. It's in the southeast of the state and is home to just over 32,000 of those Alaskans who were talking about a moment ago. Uh. <laughs> Number 55. The name Alaska was formed from the word Alaksak from the indigenous Aleut language, meaning the mainland, or more literally, the object towards which the action of the sea is directed. Alaska is catchier, to be fair. Number 6. The motto for Alaska is North to the Future. This was decided in 1967 and is meant to display Alaska as a land of promise. The nickname for Alaska is the Last Frontier, given because of its distance from the rest of the United States and its often treacherous climate and landscape. Number 7. The state seal for Alaska was designed in 1910 and features a mountain range with the rays of the aurora borealis above, as well as a smelter to represent the mining industry, a train to represent Alaska's railroads, a ship to represent their transportation by sea, trees to represent their wealth of timber, and a little farmer with his wheat for agriculture. Lovely. Number 8. Alaska also has its own flag. The blue background represents the sky and the forget-me-not Alaskan flower, and the constellation is the Big Dipper, which symbolizes a bear, something often found in Alaska and is a symbol of strength. Finally, the slightly larger north star at the top of the constellation represents the future of Alaska, the most northerly state in the Union. Number 9. Alaska's state flag was designed by a 13-year-old named Benny Benson design a better name, mate, back in 1926, and was adopted officially the following year. He won a contest for children aged between 12 and 18, and as well as having his design picked, he also won a thousand US dollars, which would roughly be worth 15.6 thousand today, as well as an engraved watch. Number 10. Alaska was first discovered by us bloody Europeans all the way back in the 1700s by Danish explorer Vitus Bering, after discovering the Bering Strait between Asia and North America during a trip to Siberian Russia in 1728. Number 11. It wasn't until Bering led a Russian expedition to the Strait in 1741 that he and his team discovered Alaska, landing close to the area that's now known as Kayak Island. The Russians created their first settlement in Alaska in 1784. Number 12. Before that, though, Alaska was populated by indigenous tribes that date back as far as 15,000 years ago. It's thought that they crossed the Bering Land Bridge that joined Russia and Alaska before the Ice Age ended. As that ended, sea levels rose and the land bridge was lost, stranding the settlers in North America. Number 13. Today, there are 231 federally recognized native tribes in Alaska, with over 180,000 tribal members. Number 14. By 1867, Russia sold Alaska and its territory to the US for $7.2 million. That's the equivalent, by the way, of around two cents an acre, which people thought was just a silly purchase of acres and acres of ice. Number 15. The signing of the Alaska Purchase Treaty has been celebrated on the last Monday of March for every year since, and the day is called Seward's Day after the Secretary of State William H. Seward. Number 16. Alaska was formally transferred to America on October the 18th, 1867, making October the 18th Alaska Day. They didn't gain statehood, though, until the 3rd of January 1959, when they became the 49th state. Number 17. 
During World War II, Japanese soldiers occupied the Aleutian Islands of Attu and Kiska. The islands were so remote it took over a year to send American and Canadian soldiers there to eject the Japanese. Number 18. Having control over these islands also gave it a tactical advantage over transportation routes in the Pacific Ocean. In fact, the US General Billy Mitchell, no not that one, or that one, once said to US Congress that in the future whoever holds Alaska will hold the world. It is the most important strategic place in the world. Number 19. Due to Alaska's weird position in the world, it's actually the easternmost, northernmost and westernmost points in the US. How is that possible? Well, the Aleutian chain of islands, which mostly belong to Alaska, crossed a longitude of 180 degrees. It's confusing, but that's the cutoff point to where east becomes west and west becomes east, like when you look at a flat map, okay? Number 20. In fact, if you built a road between the most western point of mainland Alaska and the eastern point of mainland Russia, it would only be 55 miles long. You could drive between them in under an hour. Number 21. Because of its high latitude, Alaska gets more sunlight than any other state. In fact, in the northernmost city of Barrow, or Udkiakvik, the sun doesn't even set for two and a half months out of the year during the summertime. Number 22, ooh. Conversely, the sun doesn't rise above the horizon between the end of November and the end of January. This doesn't necessarily mean it's pitch black all the time though. They just experience a nice elongated twilight period if you like, just without the sparkly vampire things. Number 23. For around 243 days of the year, the Northern Lights, also known as the Aurora Borealis, can be found in the city of Fairbanks. These days usually take place between mid-August and mid-April, as those summer months don't get dark enough. Number 24. Because of these extremely long summer days, Alaska is prone to growing giant vegetables. For example, Scott Robb grew a cabbage that weighed 138.25 pounds, gaining the world record for a giant cabbage. Yep, that exists. Number 25. The more southern areas of Alaska have a slightly milder climate, somewhat similar to that of Scotland. Obviously, the northern parts that reach Arctic and subarctic zones are much colder. Number 26. There are 30 different mountain ranges across Alaska. The mountains influence Alaska's warm weather by acting as a barrier to moisture coming from the Pacific Ocean. The warm, moist air then creates precipitation, becoming rain in lower regions and snow in higher ones. Number 27. The mountains have also shaped the roads in Alaska. Some go around the mountains, providing beautiful scenic routes, some go over the mountains, and a few even go through them. Maybe they were influenced that kid's book about the bear, which was always bad parenting, wasn't it? Number 28. Alaska is home to 17 out of 20 of the highest peaks in America. One of the most famous mountain ranges is the inventively named Alaska Range, and it's located around the south central region of the state. Number 29. The highest mountain peak in North America is Denali, or Mount McKinley, found in the Alaska Range. It measures at 20,320 feet, <laughs> blaze it, oh no, wait, that's four, isn't it? Above sea level, and is the third highest of the seven summits. That's, by the way, the tallest peaks on each continent. Number 30. If you're being technical, Denali is 2,000 feet taller than Mount Everest, which measures at 29,035 feet, as it raises 17,000 feet around its surrounding land, whereas Everest only rises 15,000 feet. Doesn't count, but still, interesting nonetheless, eh? Number 31. A number of peaks around Denali exceed 10,000 feet in height, for example Mount Forica, which is southwest of Denali, is the third highest mountain in the United States, and it reaches approximately 5,304 meters in height. Number 32. The Alaska Range as a whole is around 400 miles long and stretches across the Alaska Peninsula and into the Yukon Territory in Canada. It's known to be the highest mountain range in the world outside the Himalayas and the Andes. Number 33. It's also part of the Pacific Ring of Fire and the Denali Fault, which has been the cause of a number of earthquakes in the state. Number 34. A number of major rivers run through the Alaska Range, some of which are the Delta, Nabesna, Nanana, and Kisna Rivers. Also, rivers like the Nanana have become a great and very popular route for whitewater rafting. Number 35. In relation to the rest of the US, Alaska has 80% of all of their active volcanoes, and around 10% of those total found in the world. Number 36. Mount Novorupta in Alaska was the largest US volcanic eruption in the 20th century. In 1912, the eruption created 21 cubic kilometers of volcanic material. I'm not really sure how to quantify that, to be honest, but just know it's a lot. Number 37. There have been 240 confirmed eruptions since 1760 from 30 Alaskan volcanoes. If you do the math, that's around one volcanic eruption every year. Number 38. Two out of the three largest earthquakes in the world during 2020 took place in Alaska. So if you manage to dodge all those potential volcanic eruptions, keep an eye out for shaky ground too. Number 39. 
The Four Peaks Volcano in Alaska has proven the thought that if it hasn't erupted in multiple millennia, it's probably pretty safe. To be wrong, as it erupted in 2006 after being dormant for 10,000 years. Obviously it was just having a nice nap, I feel that. Number 40. If you thought Alaska had a lot of volcanoes, well, they have even more rivers. There are around 3,000 rivers and 3 million lakes in Alaska. That's genuinely quite impressive, really. 3 million? Number 41. With all that water needing somewhere to go and Alaska's huge size, it's not a huge surprise that more than half of the US coastline is found across Alaska. The meaning of life. Incidentally, Alaska's coastline extends for roughly 6,640 miles and has 47,300 miles of shoreline when including islands, inlets, sounds, and bays. Number 43. Not many places in the world can say this, but Alaska is the only state that has coastlines on three different seas. This is because it borders the Pacific Ocean, the Arctic Ocean, and the Bering Sea. Number 44. After Lake Michigan, Alaska holds the second largest freshwater lake in the US, called Lake Iliamna. Lake Iliamna is approximately 80 miles long and 25 miles wide. Big, basically. Number 45. In 1915, the highest temperature in Alaska was recorded in Fort Yukon, at 100 degrees Fahrenheit. In 1917, the lowest temperature in Alaska was recorded at Prospect Creek Camp at minus 80 degrees Fahrenheit, which is also the lowest temperature recorded throughout the whole of the US. Number 46. So yeah, Alaska, pretty damn cold. In fact, approximately 5% of Alaska is covered in ice. There are around 100,000 glaciers in Alaska, ranging in all sorts of sizes, but they're probably all shrinking. Number 47. The Malaspina Glacier is one of the world's largest Piedmont glaciers and its surface area is larger than Rhode Island at 1,075,049 acres. The longest glacier in North America is the Bering Glacier in Alaska, which is about 118 miles long. Number 48. There are eight national parks in Alaska, which is the second largest amount of national parks in the US. First place goes to California Ye, which has nine national parks. Number 49. The largest national forest in America is the Tongass National Forest in Alaska, which measures at almost 17 million acres in size. It's mostly rainforest and is home to loads of endangered plants and creatures. Number 50. There are 19 wilderness areas within the Tongass National Forest, more than any other. I won't name them all because we'd be here you know, forever, but the biggest and most famous is the Misty Fjords National Monument Wilderness. Number 51. President Jimmy Carter declared the site a national monument in December of 1978, after what's suspected to be the largest mineral deposit of molybdenum in the world. That's a metallic mineral similar to lead, by the way. Number 52. Out of all the Forest Service lands in the US, 17% is in Alaska, as well as two of the largest forests in the whole of the US. Number 53. The next biggest forest is the Chugach Forest, which is actually the same size as the entire state of New Hampshire and is one of the few places in the world you can find the Dahl Sheep. They're native to the northwestern subarctic and arctic regions of Northern America. Number 54. It's mostly located in the mountains that surround Prince William Sound, a place in Alaska that I wish I could tell you more about, but it takes my laptop more than five minutes to load a simple web page. Number 55. The Jagak Forest receives more than seven million visitors every year for a multitude of purposes, including kayaking, boating, hiking, skiing, and fishing. Sometimes all at once. Never all at once. Number 56. Speaking of fishing, the waters around the forest are home to all five species of Pacific salmon that Alaska is famous for. These are the Chinook salmon, sockeye salmon, coho salmon, sham salmon, and pink salmon. Number 57. Around 30% of the Chugach forest is covered in ice. In fact, some of the best ice caves in Alaska can be found at the Spencer Glacier in the Chugach forest. You can even kayak through them. Number 58. There are a number of species of wildlife that you can find across Alaska's forests, including bears, wolves, deer, elk, moose, foxes, even bison. Parts of the Alaskan range and other forests are actually enclosed in order to preserve the creatures that live there. Number 59. Alaska doesn't just have a diverse range of wildlife, but it also has all three bears that are native to North America. You know, papa bear, mama bear, ha, <laughs> ha, just kidding. They're black bears, grizzly bears, and polar bears. Number 60. Some of the largest populations of caribou in the world can be found in Alaska. You might be asking, what the hell's a caribou? Well, the more commonly used name of a caribou is a reindeer. Ah. Number 61. There are close to 30,000 bald eagles in Alaska, which is more than any other state in the US. Bald eagles have a wingspan of up to 7.5 feet and can weigh between 8 to 14 pounds. Number 62. 
The trumpeter swan, which is native to North America and is most commonly found in Alaska, was once almost hunted to extinction. Luckily, after a ban on hunting, Alaska is now home to more than 13,000 trumpeter swans, which is more than 80% of the entire world's population of the creature. Number 63. Among the wildlife in Alaska, there are still animals that we don't know a lot about. For example, the boreal owl is a common bird in Alaska, but since it's nocturnal and hides away in the most remote parts of the forest, we still don't know a huge amount about them. Nintendo 64. What I can tell you though is that the boreal owl is one of three small owls you can find in Alaska, and is comparable in size to that of a starling bird, at around 19 to 23 centimeters long. And for an owl, that's pretty small anyway. Number 65. Due to Alaska's cold and snowy climate, dog mushing, which was once a primary form of transportation, is now instead the state sport. In fact, the largest sporting event in Alaska is the Aditarod Dog Sled Race. Number 66. Since 1955, the willow ptarmigan was taken on as Alaska's state bird. It usually weighs between 10.5 ounces to 24 ounces and can be found in most high points of Alaska. Number 67. Since May the 1st, 1998, the moose has been adopted as Alaska's state land mammal. They're pretty easy to find around the Yunuk River and the birch forest of Alaska. Number 68. Alaska even has a state insect, because why not? It's the four-spot skimmer dragonfly, and unlike most of the other state animals, it can be found pretty much anywhere across the entire planet. They eat mosquitoes, so all good in my book. Number 69. This is the last time I'll use this voice, so you could say it's a climax. The bowhead whale is Alaska's marine mammal. Bowhead whales were close to extinction before due to excessive hunting, but changes in fishing laws were made to support their slow recovery out of being an endangered species. There are now 20,000 bowhead whales in the world. Number 70. The giant king salmon or the Chinook salmon is the largest species of Pacific salmon and is commonly found across North America. It also just so happens to be the state fish of Alaska. Number 71. There are some freakishly large beasts in Alaska, i.e. under the water, fish, that was meant to be the segue. One of the largest salmon that's ever been caught was in the Kenai River in 1985 and weighed 97 pounds and 4 ounces. For context, the average salmon weight is around 20 pounds. It was almost five times bigger than that. Number 72. The Alaskan Malamute dog is believed to be the first ever dog to arrive on the continent of North America. They were a perfect companion as they had incredible working and hunting skills. They're one of the oldest Arctic sled dogs, thought to have aided the migration of people across the land bridge between Siberia and Alaska. Number 73. The state flower for Alaska is the Alpine forget-me-not, which is present throughout Alaska and grows well in the state, as you might expect. Number 74. Most of us have heard of the Jade Gem. Well, Alaska has a large range of them, and, you know, no points for guessing here, but it's the state gem. When I say they have a lot of them, I mean there's an entire mountain of jade on the Seward Peninsula. Number 75. The largest oil field in North America is Prudhoe Bay, which you can find along the northern coast. Number 76. The Trans-Alaska Pipeline runs through Alaska, believe it or not, and carries on average 1.8 million barrels of oil a day. The pipeline goes through the permafrost as well as being in some areas above ground in Alaska. It's around 800 miles long and was constructed in 1968. Number 77. Through the Alaska Permanent Fund, citizens are actually paid just to live there. The government does this to offset the high living costs, and they can afford to do so because they make a lot of money from oil deposits there. Number 78. Since 1968, gold has been the official state's mineral for Alaska. Gold exports accounted for 28% of Alaska's mining wealth in 2018, so they produced quite a lot of it. Number 79. Even though Alaska is known and celebrated for the gold that is naturally found there, its biggest mineral export is actually zinc. Huge amounts of zinc can be found in the Red Dog Mine, nothing to do with Clifford, and almost 40% of Alaska's total exports are from these minerals. Number 80. Alaska is the only state that uses one row on the keyboard to type out. Just look for yourselves, give it a go, try it. All the others need at least two rows. There's one for your trivia nights. People still have trivia nights, don't they? Number 81. Interestingly, most US states have a higher percentage of women in their populations. However, in Alaska, that's just not the case. Approximately 52% of Alaska's population are male, the highest of any state. Number 82. If you're planning to travel to Alaska, it's pretty cool huh, to know that Anchorage is in fact more or less equal distance from New York City, Tokyo in Japan, and Frankfurt in Germany. Number 83. As a lot of Alaska is pretty hard to get to because of the lack of roads, they tend to fly and sail a lot. Compared to the rest of the US, Alaska has six times as many pilots and 16 times more aircraft per capita. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? 
yeah, it's actually probably more likely to be a plane if you're in Alaska. Number 84. It probably makes sense with all those planes that Alaska has 102 seaplane bases, which is way more than any other state in the US. Number 85. Lake Hood Float Plane Base is the largest and busiest seaplane base in the entire world. It handles around 200 daily operations and has more than 800 aircrafts land there every day during their summer peak. Number 86. Dalton Highway, also known as Alaska Route 11, was built in 1974 and is now one of the loneliest and most dangerous roads on the planet. Since the road is a gravelly one with lots of potholes, trying to manoeuvre through it with reduced visibility and harsh weather conditions makes it prone to accidents. Number 87. In Anchorage, along Upper Huffman Road, there's a weird hill called Gravity Hill. It has the ability to pull cars uphill even when they're in neutral. Number 88. Or not. It's actually just a mind trick where the layout of the land makes it appear that you're going uphill, but actually it's a downward slope, making me feel a bit sick to think about it actually. Number 89. Those of you who love the TikTok might have seen a series of videos about a place in Alaska called Whittier, where almost the entire town live inside the same building. It's not one house though, it's just many apartments. Number 90. That building is called Begic Towers, and was previously an army barracks developed during the Second World War when Whittier was used as a military harbour and logistics base. Number 91. It's 14 storeys high and contains 196 apartments, a post office, a general store, a church, a laundromat, and two floors of bed and breakfast rentals. There's also some government and public service offices and a tunnel, which connects to the local school. Basically, everything is in or connected to this building because the weather can be horrific. Number 92. The only way to get to Whittier by land is via an Alaskan railroad passenger train that passes through Maynard Mountain. Otherwise, if you want to get there, you best get sailing or flying, although they don't maintain the runway in the winter, so maybe not. Sounds perfect for a zombie apocalypse though, right? Number 93. Despite this, Whittier still isn't the most remote place in Alaska. That title goes to St. Matthew Island. The nearest human settlement on the island is over 300 kilometers away, and it can take 24 hours to sail from these settlements. Number 94. You won't be surprised to learn there are Walmarts in Alaska, and one of the most remote in the whole of the USA can be found on the island of Kodiak, a town with a population of just 6,000. In 2012, rapper Pitbull, Mr. Worldwide, held a vote on Facebook to see which Walmart he should perform a gig at and, you clever people, you know where this is going, internet pranksters voted overwhelmingly for Kodiak. Pitbull stuck to his word though and went there. He was given a key to the town and a bare survival kit upon arrival. Number 95. If you're not a fan of practical exams at school, you might want to steer clear of Schoenbar Middle School in Ketchikan. For 8th graders there, the final science test is a two-day survival trip on an uninhabited island. God. The trip was introduced by a teacher in 1973 after he realised his students lacked survival skills. Number 96. Remember when I said that Alaska has a lot of bears? Well, to put that into context, there's approximately one bear to every 21 people in Alaska. That doesn't sound like a lot actually, but it is, okay? Number 97. Curry the Goat became a sensation in the city of Fairbanks after escaping his delicious fate at a local Indian restaurant. He was chased and managed to evade capture for over a week, and those who spotted him would post pictures online. Once caught, he was so beloved they made him their mascot. Number 98. It's actually illegal to whisper in someone's ear while they're hunting for moose in Alaska, so don't do that. You also shouldn't push a moose out of a moving airplane or even look at one from a plane. Okay, the former one makes sense, but don't even look at one? Number 99. It's also against the law to wake up a bear for a photo opportunity, which is probably sensible, but apparently it's also illegal for a kangaroo to visit a barber shop. I really want to know the story behind that last one. Number 100. Ranch dressing was invented in Alaska by a plumber in 1949. Steve Henson developed the salad dressing while cooking up food for his co-workers. When he later retired early to California, he began selling it and it became a huge success. In 2017, 40% of Americans said it was their favourite dressing. Right. For the final time, number 101. Alaskans are also accredited with the invention of the kayak. It's debated exactly how the kayak came to be, but it's accepted that Alaska's Inuit, Aleut, and Yupik people use the watercrafts to hunt their sea prey. So those were 101 facts about Alaska. And that was the final 101 facts video voiced with this voice here. It's been a wild ride, mother factors. Thank you for coming on it with me. And I'm sure you're going to enjoy what's to come. In the meantime though, subscribe for the exciting stuff coming up, check me out on Twitter at Sam101Chap, and why not go on a trip down memory lane with one of these videos on screen now? It might be me, it might not, but thank you for everything. So long and thanks for all the fish.